Hi, we're in the South Shore with Gary Moresco. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Oh, okay, great. Did a good job with it. Thanks. Uh, I get mascaro sometimes. Mascaro? <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a professional. I'm like, I've been I've been saying names all day, so I've been <laughs> getting them down, even the tough ones. Um, but you, you're you're Pittsburgh born and bred. Pittsburgh, born and raised, uh, Mount Washington. Uh, you know, growing up in, on the streets of Mount Washington as a kid, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, PA was the backdrop of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not it was going to St. Mary's of the Mount uh, High School and grade school, the, you know, the uh, St. Mary's of the Mount Parish, uh, or delivering papers as a paper boy on Grandview Avenue, you mm -hmm. know, the uh, the backdrop of, of the city was uh, was pretty much my life. So it had a big imprint uh, at a very early age, mm -hmm. and I took it for granted. I took the, I took the view for granted. Uh, you know, now when I take the incline down to work, you know, as I'm walking Grandview Avenue, I, I you know, as I pass St. Mary's at the Mount, I, I don't think my feet are hitting the ground, you know, because <laughs> I, I get a chance to see the sun coming up over the city, uh, the city coming alive, the rivers, the, the uh, you hear the trains coming through, and the city is really just, you know, just being born for the day. So it's a pretty special feeling, and it's great to have that city as a backdrop of where you're living. I, don't, I mean, yeah, this is as good of a backdrop as anybody can hope for. Is like, so you so you live up there on the on the hill. Yep, live on the hill my and whole then, life. And then you you take it down for work. You you mentioned so you, so you work at the Harbor Rock Cafe. You're yes. the general manager. Yes, I am. And you've been there since it since it opened uh, eleven years ago. Yes, opened up in June of uh, two thousand and two, oh. and that was right on the right on the back end of, uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, there was a lot of capital investment going on in Pittsburgh. Two new stadiums, new convention center, and of course uh, Forest City with uh, with the um, Bessemer Court. Development, so it made right. sense for us to come. Pittsburgh's been a great city for us to be in. Oh yeah, no, I mean, do you get to? Um, I, I hear about the Hard Rock all the time. Um, you must get like a lot of like Pittsburgh. I mean, people, all different types of people coming into the Hard Rock Cafe, and you're like seeing them all. There's no doubt. I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have a certain amount of, of, of local guests and a lot of mm -hmm. visitors. You know, because I think that, you know, it's an iconic brand. You know, mm -hmm. so when people visit, you know, whether they're from from London or from Italy, you know, wherever, when they do come into the city, they want to see a Hard Rock Cafe. So yeah. we get a nice mixture of both local uh, and visitors to uh, to our cafe. Mm -hmm. um, so what what made you stay? Like, what made you want to stay here? Uh, specifically, I mean. Uh, well, I, you know, the opportunity number one. I, you know, and I think that I was in. I was a food and beverage guy my whole life. You know, yeah. growing up in Mount Washington, I worked at a lot of food and beverage establishments up there. Went to school at IUP, uh, but. Uh, you know, something resonated very deeply with me with the city uh, when I felt that I could run and be, in, be a, involved in kind of the gatekeeper of a global iconic concept like the Hard Rock Cafe in the city. Um, it was compelling, you know, yeah. because it, it, re it resonated very deeply with me because we do a lot. We're involved in a lot. There's never a, the same day. Uh, mm -hmm. There's always, you know, some change going on, whether it's a live event, it's a group event, uh, a promotion that we're doing a new line of merchandise, there's always something new and always something fresh. Yeah. And it keeps it fun. Yeah. Like what kind of, I guess what kind of events do you guys get down here? Well, it could be anything. I mean, anything from a bike night in the street uh, to a, a corporate buyout inside the cafe, um, you know, to, uh, you know, we're getting ready to open up the, uh, the Bessemer Court Fountain right now. Uh -huh. So that'll be a whole other experience for guests to come down and take in the fountain show with the backdrop of the city. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, live music. I mean, live music is part of what we do. It's not the whole part, you know, the whole part, but we do roughly 150, 160 dates of live music in the wow. course of a year. So we mix that with nationals, with with local bands, and uh, it's a it, it's a part. It's a it's a part of that overall mosaic of, of of what we call the Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah, I mean that's that's super impressive. Do you, do you think Pittsburgh's a really good music? Uh, Scene, I guess. There's a lot of a lot of people. Uh, I think I think so. I mean, there's there's you know there's a lot of different clubs out there that do live, um, you know. And we just finished off you know two band showcases. We had the the Winter Rock showcase that uh, Nick Marzok had won, which is a it's a way for us to try to find that voice for local live music. Uh, and of course, we're tied in with the X. We work with uh, you know uh, the uh, the X for that um, uh, you know for that competition. But you know, it's a great way for us to celebrate uh, celebrate local live music. But um, uh, yeah, there is a, a great grassroots element of local live music as well as, you know, uh, touring national bands that come through. Yeah, I, I'd imagine. Um, and and the incline, what, what, can you, what can you tell me about that? I mean, like, so that area up there, is that, what is that, is that still the South Shore or is that no, no longer the South Shore? Uh, well, that, I mean, it's a corridor of Grandview Avenue uh -huh. that, that takes you down uh, to Southside. Uh, you know, the... Um, the the it, it, the the origin to it goes back to the 1800s. You know when they, when they, when there was a lot of immigrants up there, they were trying to move people up and down faster. So you know it's uh, 
my grandfather uh, that, uh, you know, as I've said, he came through Ellis Island in 1925 and settled in Pittsburgh. He came from, from, uh, from uh, Italy, from Calabria. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, he eventually, eventually settled with his family up in, in Mount Washington and worked on a railroad down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he would take that incline down as well uh, back in the 30s and 40s. So it's, it's pretty cool that I'm taking the same incline to work uh, today. Now that's amazing. And then he came down here and, and you said he moved, he came down to Ellis Island like 18, 18 something? Or, uh, uh, 1925 or 19, 19, 19, he came 19, through right. Ellis Island. Uh, he settled eventually when... Uh, Little Italy back then was a lot where, where Duquesne University is now. That's where right. all the Italian immigrants settled in, and eventually that they moved out. And Mount Washington was really a melting pot back then. You had a lot of Irish, a lot of German, um, uh, you know, those different nationalities, uh, Irish. Uh, they all settled in, and then that was part of the melting pot of, you know, of our generation. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm kind of a back-end baby boomer, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have the melting pot. Like, we have the uh, like actual, like, melting pot of, like, the steel melting pot. We have like the furnaces and like all this steel renovation. We also have the melting, yeah, the melting pot of the ethnicities that came in to work in the steel, uh, like the steel mills, and and work really hard. Yeah, when you think of that whole generation, I mean, that's a generation that really built, uh, you know, built a lot of uh, the Northeast. Yeah. You know, and uh, and then it's amazing too that on the other side of that generation, when we got into the 70s and 80s, that we had to become, we had to reinvent ourselves as a city, and you know, and now we're. We're built on, on, on education, on healthcare, care, uh, technologies. It's a whole different base of, uh, you know, uh, economy. So, uh, and I think that's a tribute to how resilient Pittsburghers are. Yeah, well, tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what do you, I mean, so I've, I've heard a little bit, I, I, actually a lot. I mean, Pittsburghers are resilient, you know? And what do you think about, like, this community, this, and where you think it's going, and, and the resiliency of Pittsburghers to build, build up this community? Well, if you look at it, I mean, that, you know, we didn't take the real dip in the recession that, you know, that uh, everybody else took a harder hit. And I think that right now we're one of three or four cities that have completely recovered out of it. So that, I think that's a testament to itself. But, you know, I think it goes to back to forward leadership. You know, when you get into the 70s and Dick uh, Calajuri, mayors that looked looked at, at the uh, the future of what, of, of what uh, you know, Pittsburgh would look like without without having a manufacturing base in steel was that was that was dying. Uh, and what would be relevant. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think that uh, that, I think that that has built some metal, uh, yeah. you know, to it, you know, and making us successful. And, uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, Pittsburgh is going to have that, has that diversity and, uh, and has that talent level to be able to continue to adapt and evolve and be successful. Yeah. And that foresight, that, 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 that ingenious foresight to really take something that was, you know, once, once a great town and is a great town, and to keep it a great town. But it's amazing when you get people to come in, that they look around uh, and they see that there's not a lot of pollution, the, uh, you know, that they see the, the beauty of the city. It was amazing as a kid growing up, I used to fish in these rivers and you caught two fish. You caught a catfish or a carp. Yeah. You know, now a few years back, we've had Bassmaster tournaments inside, this, uh, inside these rivers. Yeah, so and that's super That's impressive. a testament of yeah. like how the whole development piece of the city has gone. So. And the pollution has been cut down a lot. There used to no be doubt. the smoke, darkness during the day sometimes and at night you would see the the I guess like lit billows like uh, exactly. But yeah, now yeah. it's 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 really wonderful. One of the greener cities. Uh, no think. doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, all right. Well, well. Thank you for being on the show. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I really like, like to hear what you had to say. And it was it was great. I, mean, uh, I appreciate being here. Thanks for having yeah. me. Thanks for being on. Cool.